Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Live here, and today we're reviewing for you Balan Wonderworld on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the wonderful Mitch Vogel and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Balan Wonderworld is a strange game. Mascot platformers were all the rage around the turn of the century, but that fad has long since died off. Yet here comes a brand new, seemingly high budget entry in the genre that feels straight out of 2001, and not in a good way. What's more, it's produced by Square Enix, no less. Unfortunately, Balan Wonderworld feels like a period piece in many respects, only it's a new release and not a relic of two decades ago. Stiff control uninteresting level design, and many other issues all come together for a game that simply fails to properly achieve what it sets out to do. The story starts off with you selecting either a boy or a girl character, followed by a short though well-animated cutscene, which thoroughly fails to explain any of the events which are to follow. The children are both unhappy for some reason, and as they wander the streets of their random city, they happen across a mysterious entrance to a place called Wonderworld in a back alley, and of course, they go in, because why wouldn't you? Upon crossing the threshold, they're quickly accosted by a grinning and vaguely menacing showman figure named Balan, who whisks them away to a fantasy land to presumably do something good for other people, maybe. Honestly, we're not sure entirely what the narrative is here, as Balan Wonderworld refuses to explain what's going on. Is your character dreaming? Are they dead? Is this all just a hallucinogenic trip that they're experiencing in the alley? We have no idea. Each of the worlds is orientated around an NPC character with their own tragic backstory, and it seems like you're somehow helping them out by collecting things, <laughs> although it's never made clear how or what you're really doing. For example, one of the first worlds is about a scuba diver who enjoys swimming with her dolphin friend. Then the dolphin turns on her and tries to kill her by removing her air tank. The girl is hospitalized as a result, but after the boss fight at the end of her world, she goes back to the ocean and finds that the dolphin is now just back to its old self, and she joyously swims with it again. Uh, the player's actions obviously had a hand in this redemption, but what actually happened is never explained. Why did the dolphin go bad? How did collecting random trinkets and beating a boss character fix things? Will the dolphin's urge to kill come back again? Find out next time in Never. All of this is to say Balan Wonderworld does an absolutely awful job at telling its story. Platformers are, of course, not known for their complex narratives, but even given the low bar set by other games in the genre, this comes up short. It fails to grant you even a simple, coherent explanation for why you're collecting items and exploring this strange world. And unfortunately, problems with storytelling are only the tip of a very big iceberg of issues responsible for sinking Balan Wonderworld. Gameplay unfolds in a standard collectathon 3D platformer fashion. Each world consists of two two levels, with a smattering of things for you to pick up, and then it's finished with a simple boss fight after the second level. Your objective for each level is to simply reach the end and pick up the fancy-looking heart trinket, but along the way there are also eight golden Balan statues to pick up, which are this game's equivalent of stars or jiggies. Pick up enough of them and you'll unlock more levels. It's pretty standard, it's fine. Between all of these there are also drops to pick up, which basically function as Balan Wonderworld's version of coins. So far so similar, but the wheels start coming off almost as soon as this snowmobile gets going. Moment to moment gameplay is mostly built around the 80, that's right, 80 suits that you can pick up along the way, each of which have entirely one function. The spider suit lets you climb spider webs. The dolphin suit lets you swim through water. The wolf suit lets you do a spin jump. In a better game, having this diversity of ideas could likely lead to some fantastic gameplay, but Balan Wonderworld somehow finds a way to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. You see, the issue with the costume system is that it's a mile wide and an inch deep. 
Having all these costumes is one thing, but having interesting levels that take advantage of their abilities is quite another. The game never finds many ways to go beyond the absolute most basic obstacles possible for these suits, which means gameplay gets dull quickly. Moreover, many of the suits can't justify their own existence. For example, one from the Dolphin Girls world, it's like a, a jellyfish type thing, allows you to swim through floating tubes of water. Fine. But then five minutes after finding it, you find another costume which allows you to do exactly the same thing, but with the added ability to jump out of the water tube whenever you please. As a result, the second suit completely invalidates the utility of the first, making it essentially worthless. The developers could have probably cut half of these suits out of the game and lost virtually nothing in the process, which speaks volumes to the overall value in the larger game design. Great games take interesting ideas and explore them from a variety of angles. Balan Wonderworld is a game which just shotguns weak ideas at a wall and hopes to god that some of them stick. On top of this, Balan Wonderworld simply isn't fun to play moment to moment. By this we mean the controls are stiff and unintuitive, they just don't feel very good. Where Mario joyously leaps and bounds his way through environments, the characters here feel like they jump more out of a sense of begrudging obligation. A lot of this is down to the animation quality, which is just terrible. Even the basic walking animation looks goofy and stilted, as though they're trying to act like they're walking rather than just walking, and this stiffness affects virtually every aspect of the game. There is no point in this adventure when the controls suddenly click, there's no point where they feel smooth and natural at all. The control issue would be damning enough on its own, but it's further compounded by the shoddy level design which could be best described as confused. For example, the first time we found a golden hat in a level, Balan suddenly appeared and offered to share his power. We were then ripped out of the level and forced to engage in a fever dream sequence where he punched rocks in a featureless void whilst we did quick time events. Upon completing the last one, we were given a statue and dumped back into the level as though nothing happened. And if you think there might be an explanation for all of that, no. When you're not getting roped into non sequitur sequences like this, the basic levels themselves are nothing to write home about. There's not much reliance on challenging player skills here, as hazards are painfully easy to negotiate. Enemies show up every now and then in scripted fights, but they put up almost no resistance and can be mostly ignored. The main quote-unquote challenge comes from scouring levels for Balan statues, yet these are almost always hidden behind simple and obviously overcome obstacles that require, unsurprisingly, a specific suit to reach. It's this focus on simplicity that really deals the damning blow to Balan Wonderworld. There's nothing wrong with setting up different hurdles in each level for each suit's abilities, but this game fails to go beyond scratching, not, not even scratching the surface, with the creativity of these obstacles. A creative failure that extends to the control scheme limited by one button. All of the primary face buttons and both of the ZL and ZR triggers do exactly the same thing, which for most suits is a version of jump, and in some cases it might even be a basic attack instead. But it can't be both, and the result of that is that if you wear an attack-focused suit, you literally can't jump in a platformer. There is no reason for a limitation like this to exist, and it only makes an already frustrating game that much more baffling. And what were they thinking? Worse yet, the few things that Balan Wonderworld really needs to explain to you don't get properly introduced to the player. For example, the hub world is overrun by these colourful chicks called Tims that you're supposed to feed with the drops that you pick up in levels. The Tims build a tower in the middle of the hub, somehow, but this tower's important if it has any at all is never explained or referenced at all. You're also never told outright that you can swap suits at checkpoints if you hold down the action button, which is something that quite often you literally need to do. For such a simplistic game, it's honestly a amazing that Balan Wonderworld manages to drop the ball in explaining its most basic systems. To its credit, Balan Wonderworld at least looks decent. The worlds are all nicely detailed and brightly coloured, giving you quite a bit to look at as you fuss around with the weird controls. Unfortunately, performance is beyond terrible. The 30 frames per second cap is very rarely hit, things generally seem to hover sometimes even as low as between 10 and 15 frames per second, and sometimes just masses of dropped frames over a second long sometimes. If enemies spawn, or even if you just happen to, I don't know, 
move the camera a little bit too quickly, the frame rate tanks and the game chugs considerably. Then there's the downright weird artistic decisions made, like how NPC characters and creatures will randomly be dancing in lines in various parts of the level, and if you approach them, they just vanish into thin air. I mean, in that regard, you could say Balan Wonderworld achieves its goal of showing you a dreamlike world, but there's just not enough here graphically to justify the awful performance. We're not gonna mince our words here, Balan Wonderworld is a waste of your time. Monotonous level design, awful performance, and shallow gameplay combine to make for an experience that is simply not fun to play. It may look halfway pretty when the frame rate isn't absolutely destroyed, but there simply isn't enough good content here to justify your time or money. And this is doubly true when you take into account that this is a full-priced retail release. If you're looking for a good 3D platform, for your Switch, this most definitely is not it. You've reached the end of the review, and that means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts, and I've got plenty. First of all, I want to give credit where credit's due. Balan Wonderworld's cutscenes are pretty damn good. They look quite nice. They're a little bit compressed in places, but, you know, it, it's fine. You know, it, they're actually quite pleasing to look at. Sometimes they don't actually animate the characters, like, in the, like, swoopy round cutscenes, but it's fine. It works. But, yeah, no, cutscenes overall... I think are overall pretty damn good. The graphic style is maybe not exactly what I would go for, but I can appreciate it regardless. They are good. There's also one instance of really good imagery that I want to point out, and that's one of the worlds, uh, the, the, the person, the NPC you're helping out. They have a kitten that unfortunately, it suggests, gets hit by a car, and the girl is obviously extremely upset. And that's a topic I can personally associate with. And then when you find the boss, the arena is surrounded by traffic lights. I think that's really good, because that's the sort of detail that would stick in your mind during a traumatic event. You'd sort of think, oh, why wasn't it a red light and then, you know, my cat would be fine. That's good. That is genuinely good. Unfortunately, the rest of the game is absolute crap. Mitch already explained how the controls are awful and the gameplay and the level design is just bad and there's so much wrong with this. And yet, he did say that the game looks halfway decent. I don't know whether it's just a personal thing, but I think the game looks atrocious. <laughs> like, the textures are incredibly muddy. It seems to be running at... I, I don't know. I don't know because I haven't pixel counted, but like it appears to be definitely not 1080p, maybe like 720p or 800p or something, you know, just not 1080p. And yet it runs this poorly, this atrociously poorly. What's even worse is that it seems to run worse than the demo. And I think that maybe, maybe, I'm, I'm just guessing here, but I maybe because they slightly increased the running speed of the main character, well, just of your character which, um, you know, compared to the demo, and I think that maybe it's kind of forcing too many loading instances at once for the game to handle, which is embarrassing. The skill ceiling in this game is, is like floor level. There is no, <laughs> there's no way to be really good at this game. Like, you just do what is expected of you, and you've basically reached like the maximum level. There are a few slightly harder to reach, like big drops and stuff like that, which, you know, you have to use specific power, uh, specific suits from other worlds or something like that, and okay. But these are few and far between. Most of the time it's just, hey, look, there's a thing, grab it, well done you! And some people may be going to the comments and saying, well, that's just like Super Mario Odyssey, you know, there were loads of really easy moons there. But it's like, yeah, but th th they weren't the only moons, and this is the only stuff in Balan Wonderworld. The trophies are just so easy to get. It is painful. It is boring to play. I think that is that is the thing. It is just out and out, just, you know, with everything taken into account, the game is just boring. I played this game for like six hours on a Sunday because I've got a lot to do this week in order to get the footage for this review and I was so bored after about half an hour, but I had to push through because I had to get footage for you lovely people and do I regret it? In a way, no. This game is like a compounded perfect laundry list of how not to make a game. You may think I'm being overly harsh, and that's your opinion. If you can find enjoyment in this game, then I say more power to you. Enjoy the game. 
but I've got to be honest, this is one of the worst games I've played in years. And the fact that it's $60, there is no excuse for this game to be this bad.